Sid! Tell me, when you were defeated in Bung Chung, the king urged you to return several times, but you gave excuse after excuse not to return! Do you wish to rebel? Luan, don't talk to him like what? that. What? Let's talk in front of the king. Can he still face the king of Han? You think you can threaten the king of Han because of the soldiers you command? Don't forget that it was the king of Han who appointed you commander-in-chief! If it weren't for the king, you are nothing! Luan! Luan! Luan. We can't blame the commander-in-chief. If we left and we were ordered, we would have been attacked from behind. Enough! Stop making excuses! And what about you? When Pang Chang fell, he didn't come to save the king. You didn't come either! Are you still considered our lord's brothers? Now you only obey the commander-in-chief, but not the king! You two are a pair of bastards! Luan, stop talking nonsense! What are you referring? The two of you! Say that again! You're a bastard! Let me go! You two let him go! Let me go! Say again to me! I didn't say anything wrong! I will kill you! Chief will be there shortly. Understood. King's orders! Only Hanshin can enter. Majesty, I hope you can forgive me. Forgive you? What did you do? My lord urged me to come back three times, but I didn't return as you ordered. I apologize to you, my lord. Oh, so you do understand. So you deliberately disobeyed me? Yes! Why did you do that? Explain! Since you appointed me Commander-in-Chief, I have never neglected my duties. When Peng Chung was attacked and I didn't rush back to save you, that was my fault. But I was thinking, no matter what happens, we must do our best to preserve our forces. Because that is all that we have! When Sheng Ye attacked Peng Cheng, you only had your personal guards with you. But if I had led our soldiers back, it would have been more dangerous. All of them might have been killed! Fine! Forget Peng Cheng for now. Tell me, have you received the letters I sent? I did. Why did you come back so late? Last three months? 
I stayed in Joe Shoy attracting soldiers until finally there were some improvements. Fun Cheng has been glaring at us like a tiger, watching my every move. I know. You were burning with impatience at that moment. You don't think I have been worried as well? I was afraid to fail you, to bring harm to your majesty. I can't let that happen. As a general, I cannot do that. Your majesty. There were more new soldiers than old soldiers, and they needed training. If I had divided our forces back then, we would have definitely exposed the weakness. Fan Zhang would have attacked us and we'd lose. But right now, our soldiers are well prepared and food supplies are sufficient. That is why I hurried to your side. I wanted to see you, your majesty, and explain things to you. against Chu. I cannot be there with you. Just take my sword. With this sword, it's like having me by your side. Do a good job. himself king? Ridiculous. Lu Pong hasn't learned anything at all. By appointing himself king, he thought he could change the situation and get enough soldiers to defeat me. Your majesty, you shouldn't underestimate him. Lu Pang is in Shenyang recruiting soldiers. He's collecting food supplies in Aotong and appointed himself king. By doing this, he's telling the world that he is determined to fight it out with you. What's the use of determination? The world we live in is won by battling. It cannot be won by talking. No matter how strongly fortified Shenyang is, it's still a city. His attitude in defending his territory is just asking for death. How about this? I will lead my soldiers to fight him and make him... Wake up to the truth. Well, I... Brother! <laughs> Mr. Fan. Bad news. Zhongli Mei's in trouble. Qi Kingdom betrayed us. And the worst part is, General Mei's soldiers were divided into small groups. He can't gather his soldiers to attack. When I return to Pongchang, Qi territory is already ours. <sighs> the Qi soldiers are too cunning. In order to avoid fighting our army, they thought of a scheme. They divided their army and decided to hide in different cities and villages. They also changed into common clothes. We have no way to tell them apart from the citizens, and we can't kill them all. And while our soldiers are moving north, they suddenly appeared in their armors and surrounded General Mei. 
summon Longju and Jibu. We'll go to Qi. After we handle Qi Kingdom, we'll take care of this coward Lu Pong. We won't gain much from Qi. It's better if Chong Li Mei returns to Peng Cheng and joins the attack on Liu Pang. No. Chong Li Mei and I are like brothers. I can't let him be in danger. Mr. Chen of Qi is a filthy rat. This kind of battle strategy is such a nissel to me. I will not tolerate it. Chu Qi, prepare to leave. We'll go to Qi. Understood. From now on, I'm afraid I cannot allow people to stay neutral in the crossfire between Chu and Han. If they want, they can ally with us. We can go attack Chu and then share all the land. Or they are our enemies. We will kill them. And it doesn't matter who those people may be. Commander Han. Your Majesty. I am worried that if we kill a single one of them, it might incite others to resist us. <laughs> you mean to say that they may actually end up uniting to attack me? It's not entirely impossible. After all, the Qin Kingdom was destroyed in exactly the same manner. That's wrong! What happened in Pangchang proves that alliances with the Fief Kings is unreliable. But have you thought about this? Do you think Shang Ye will just sit and do nothing while we destroy the Fief Kings one by one? Once Shang Ye learns of our strategy, we may find ourselves into much deeper trouble. You have a point. What should we do then? We should stay in Shang Yang. We should stay in Shang Yang? Why should we? Shang Yang is easy to defend and we have enough food supplies. I believe it would be easy for us to defeat Shang Ye here. The problem with that is how we can lure Shang Ye here to attack us. I'm afraid we have only one choice. free to destroy all the other thief kings. Why didn't you just say so? You're right. If I just stay here in Xing Yang, Shang Ye will come here to kill me. My lord, I think this strategy is too dangerous. We cannot afford to make any mistakes here. Eh, uh, you don't know Shang Ye. For that guy, taking revenge is even more important than his life. As long as he learns that I'm in Xing Yang, he'll rush over here like a rabid dog. And when he does that, General Han Xin, you can concentrate on destroying the Fief Kings. However, if it happens that Xing Yang is in danger, I wonder if you could get here in time to save us. I swear on my life I will protect you, my king. That's good. Your Majesty, there's one more thing. Wei Bao pretended to visit Wei Kingdom, but he stationed his forces in Lin Jindu. He means to oppose us, Your Majesty, as you may know. When we lost Pang Cheng, he didn't send a single soldier to oppose the Chu army. This Wei Bao really is troublesome. I feel that we have to make Wei Bao an ally since we must concentrate our forces to attack Shang Yu. I request to be the emissary to go and persuade Wei Bao and convince him to submit to you again. Persuade him? Can you do that? I'd like to try. Should he agree, it would surely be a huge advantage to us. That despicable fellow. He's so fickle, I wouldn't count on him at all. But you are free to try. Mr. Lee, 
Bring some men with you to persuade Wei Bao. If he doesn't agree, withdraw immediately. Understood. General Han, follow Mr. Li closely. Once Wei Bao tries to betray us, immediately attack the city. Destroy him! Understood! What is outside the tent? I shall take my leave. Mr. Fan. <sighs> Sworn father, why are you here so late? I have come for your safety. No, I'm no danger. Since you are here, you've left Pong Chang unguarded. No, Pong Chang is fine. I disguised myself so people won't know I've left. I'm here because of this. Wei Bao is going whichever way the wind blows, whoever seems to be winning. However, he has decided to join you and defeat Liu Pang this time. <laughs> Wei Bao? He's just a rat. I don't take him seriously. The reason I allied with him is because Wei Kingdom acts as a barrier to stop Liu Pang from moving east. <laughs> you are right, Your Majesty. How dare that Ying Bu refuse come here? He said he's ill. <clears throat> that selfish dog. I've already asked twice for his assistance. But he only sent me 2,000 old weak and wounded soldiers. He sent only 1,000 foot soldiers when Pang Cheng was surrounded. Fine. Now he doesn't need a single person. Tell me, isn't that betrayal? Guards! Oh. Don't do that, Your Majesty. Sworn Father, why do you always stop me? Think this through, Your Majesty. Your heart and mind are totally consumed by war. Everyone has their selfish motives. Some cannot be tolerated. Liu Pang, give him some grain, he wants an entire granary. Give him a granary, he wants a hundred. There's no end to it. And there are people like Ying Bu. You must try your best to satisfy him. What he wants is not much. A drop in the ocean. You might as well satisfy him. You mean to say that I should just compromise? I should just tolerate his insolence? Ying Bu just behaves arrogantly, but it's not in his interest to betray you. Have you forgotten? When you gave out fiefs in Shenyang, how was he in the beginning, and later on? Just a desolate county in Zhujiang and a woman, and he resolutely supported you. He doesn't want that much, does he? But this is not a matter of how much, it's... Uh... It's an insult! It's disrespect, don't you see? If you impulsively slap him, it will only hold up our attack on Qi. Ying Bu wouldn't just let you slap him anyway, right? We should preserve our forces and focus on attacking our real enemy. As for Ying Bu, just swallow our pride. Send envoys to persuade him to support us. Let's hear his complaints. Understand what he wants. And let's negotiate with him. On one hand, awe him with your dignity. On the other, he will lust after the rewards. It would be an advantage for us not to let him join Liu Pang. Swallow my pride? Your Majesty, use your dignity to awe him, favors for his greed. Use victories to terrify him. Send envoys as warning to those who try to stay neutral. Of course, you should not expect that he will show you any gratitude. After all, Ying Bu was once a prisoner. When he was in Li Shan, he does not understand that. He is just like an insect. Nothing is left in his heart except greed, cruelty, cowardice, and selfishness. <laughs> you want me to swallow my pride and tolerate an insect? He had nothing to lose before. 
so he fought fearlessly, just like a brutal insect. Now he has his fief. He is learning to value his life. He is now an insect who lost its claws. A person like that is worth a second thought, not worthy to be called your enemy. But if a person like that is persuaded to join Liu Pang, what will happen? Liu Pang is very skillful in winning the support of men like that. Then, Ying Bu will be a ferocious insect again. His claws will quickly grow back. His claws? A vicious insect? His claws? Yes. <laughs> Sworn Father, I really love hearing you talk like that. In the past, you really kept on preaching and preaching. You almost drove me crazy, huh? You know that? Only when I talk this way, in such a vulgar manner, can you finally understand me. I understood. Everything you taught me in the past, I just didn't like listening to them. You didn't? <laughs> Sworn Father, I'll send out an envoy to talk to Yingbu. I'll tell him that I value him, and I wish to share more thieves with him. All right? Sworn Father, you... you go rest now. Tomorrow, return to Pengchang. Good, good. All right? Good, yes, that's good. <laughs> Get a good rest. Take such liberties! My king, he is merely a palm reader. Oh, fortune teller, can you tell my fortune as well? Fortune teller, you may be allowed to touch her, but don't get ahead of yourself. Hey! Madam, your features are all indescribable indeed. I have never seen such a noble fate in my life. Madam, your son will become an emperor. You will become the most respected woman in the land. Emperor? What a bunch of lies! Where's the emperor? I am not lying. If you don't believe me, we can wait and see, your majesty, if what I said is true. Madam, Your Majesty, I will take my leave now. Your Majesty, he's talking nonsense. We should kill him. No. Let him go. Understood. Give him 10,000 chen. Understood. Is that good luck or bad luck? Your Majesty, how can you easily believe a fortune teller? No, it's good luck. It's definitely good luck. Oh, wait. He said my son will be the son of heaven. What does that make me? I'm heaven. Then I am heaven. I'm heaven! Reporting! What? <laughs> Your Majesty! The King of Han's envoy is outside the city. Go kill him. Understood. Hold on. Hmm? Uh, hey, wait! No harm in meeting him. Uh, uh, but my wife, I have already surrendered to Shang Ye. If I meet with the Han envoy now, and Shang Ye finds out, he will surely behead me. Whether you die or not will not be decided now. Let him in. Uh, let him in. Understood. Uh, dear wife, uh, uh, what should I say to him? 
Just say anything that you want to say. Hey, wait. I say what I want to say. Say what I want to say. Just say what I want to say. present here are from Fong Yi and Pei County. It's been a long time. Come, let's drink. Drink, drink. drink. Cheers. <sighs> Tao Tan, I know you're not happy about something. What is there to be angry about? How deep is that grudge? Luan, Fan Kwai, there's something I want you two to understand. I was the one who sent Cao Tan and Cho Bo to stay with General Han Xin. Why did I send the two of them? They're both loyal to me, can tell right from wrong, and have been through life and death with us. They have loyally carried out every single order I gave to them. That's why it's not their fault. Don't hold a grudge against them. However, I need to speak for Lu Wan and Fan Kwai's situation as well. You can't blame them for this matter either. Think about it. I told Han Shen to come back three times, but he didn't return. You think I won't complain against that? Can I keep quiet about it? Naturally, they adopted my grudge as well, and they took their anger out on you. So, in the end, it's not their fault either. It's all mine. It is my fault. And now, I Lu Jie will drink as punishment. Uh, uh, your Majesty. Majesty. My brothers. Tell me. How much have we all suffered already? Huh? We are lucky to still be alive. <laughs> and still, we are luckier. Because look, we can still fight together to claim the land! It is true that we have no control over our life and death. But we can control grievances. Why have these grievances? We are all from Bay County! All of you are my trusted men! You all working together in harmony is my luck! You're all the reason I can sleep easily at night! That's why there should be no more grievances between us! Huh? Huh? For our brotherhood! A toast! Drink! Let's drink. Uh, drink! Cheers, my lord! Drink. Cheers, my lord! Let's drink! Good. Chobo. My lord! Starting now, you stay by my side. Fan Kwai. Yes? You and Tao Tan will assist the Commander-in-Chief. Don't worry, my lord. If Han Shen dares to betray you, I'll be the first to kill him. Nonsense. I ordered you to assist him. I'm not ordering you to spy on him. Huh? <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> Come on, then. Come. Let's drink to the reunion of our Brotherhood of Pei. Cheers. 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 Bottom sum sum. The King of Han disregards etiquette and doesn't respect Confucian scholars. Maybe his attitude seems very inappropriate for you. But have you considered? In times of war, etiquette doesn't bring peace and stability to a kingdom. In these times, we should just leave out superficial things. As a scholar, how can you say such things? It really is annoying. I can freely express my opinions. I don't expect you to agree. Lord Jang.
Lord Chan. You argued that quite skillfully, definitely not like a Confucian. I think interpretations of a doctrine cannot remain unchanged. In my opinion, scholars who do not adjust to the times are just being foolishly stubborn. You must be sweet, huh? That is correct. You have the gift of eloquence. The King of Wei has arrived! So annoying. So annoying! My dear, just now Liu Pang sent that old fellow to me. He's willing to forgive the past. Nonsense! Do I need him to forgive me? So I've heard. Just now someone reported that Hanshin's soldiers have arrived in Lin Jindu. Who do you think is stronger between the two? Of course, the strongest one here is definitely King Shang. Then why do you hesitate? My dear, what do you mean by that? I think your decisions today are a little strange. I remember that in the past, you always disagreed with me. Uh, my dear. I'm just a woman. You shouldn't ask me about everything. What are you doing? Let go of me! How dare you! What are you doing? King, King of Wei! King of Wei! In times of war, you cannot kill an envoy! Even if you want to fight the King of Han, you should let me go! You cannot kill me! Are you peeing your pants now? <sighs> Didn't you say you don't fear death? You can beg me for mercy! You... let me go! Let him go. <sighs> Stop talking nonsense, or else you cannot go back. Tell the King of Han that I, Wei Bao, will never join him. If he wants to attack me, then he can go right ahead. Give me back my wine vessel. You envoys are all good for nothing but crying, sucking up, and acting shamelessly. Well, that's what I'm good at. Don't make an embarrassment of yourself to me. <laughs> I have lived this long, but this is the first time I've seen a man act so complacent while standing on top of his grave. You, make the most of your time. Eat and drink your fill. Here's your wine vessel. Take it back. <laughs> How dare you curse me, you ridiculous old man. <laughs> Lord Sui, I have recommended you to the King of Han. I hope you'll not fail us, and that you'll do your best to try to convince Ying Bu to join us. I don't know what the King permits me to offer Ying Bu. If you can invite him here, just promise him whatever he wants. As for the King of Han, I'll think of something. Hearing you say that, Lord Chang, I will spare no efforts to persuade him. Good. I wish you success. Thank you. Farewell. soldiers in Lin Jindu to stop our soldiers from advancing like you predicted. Exactly as I have guessed. Who is acting as his commander-in-chief? It's Bai Zhe. This man has no bravery, strategy, or courage. When he faced Chin soldiers, he turned and ran. 
He was named General Butt. <laughs> General <laughs> Butt. <laughs> then he is no match for Han Shin at all. Wait and see how Han Shin teaches him a lesson. I don't think the king knows the danger we're in. Baiji didn't make King Wei arrogant. It's the river in front of us. Commander-in-Chief, we only found seven broken down boats. All of the boatmen, the fishermen, they were all captured by the King of Wei. We'll be stranded if we can't cross the river. We'll be in a difficult position. General Vart! Don't think that I would fear you just because he spread your troops! Just you wait! I will kick your butt and carve your flesh! <laughs> <laughs> Commander-in-Chief, what should we do now? How many boats did you say we have again? Seven. It's enough. Seven is enough. Someone fix them and prepare to cross the river. Also, try to collect many narrow wooden jars. Wait, what are those for? The more, the better. Hurry, hurry. Understood. Commander-in-Chief. It's a distraction. We can make rafts with enough jars. Then at daybreak, you lead our soldiers across the river, conquer Lin Chen Du, and kill Wei Bao. Understood. General Butt! Wait for me! I'll kick your butt and carve your flesh! is already in the city. Why haven't you taken your life yet? The king dies first, followed by his women. Don't you know the rule? Uh, uh, I can let you go first. Why do you have so many excuses? Uh, all right, fine. I'll go first. My dear, I can't bear to part with you. You can't bear to part with me? <laughs> if I were a man, at this moment, even if I was defeated, I would not want to feel humiliated. You've not been captured or humiliated and can still die like a king. Aren't you satisfied? <laughs> Stop there! Don't come any closer! Don't move! Put down your sword! Wait right here. Kneel down. I want to see the King of Han. You think you're worthy to see the King of Han? Don't touch me! You are such a disloyal villain. You joined our king and promised to attack the man that killed Emperor Yi. But you surrendered to Shang Ye and put soldiers to attack us. You betrayed the King of Han. Your entire family should be killed. Where is the King of Han? The King is here! King of Han! King of Han! Please forgive me! Wei Bao. War is men's domain. Why tie a woman up? Release her! Understood! Understood. Don't touch me! Wei 
Bao. Do you want to live or do you want to die? Sin so 